What is up, everybody? Welcome to episode 29 of the Texans franchise. And today we are going to be taking on the Jaguars for our first playoff game of the series. Yes, that is correct. We have not been able to get to the postseason yet in this franchise. Today, we finally change that and we get to start it off at home. Thanks to us winning the AFC South. The last time we played these guys, it ended in a loss. It was a tough loss. One where our defense just did not play well. Of course, I, you guys know I put out the... I had in there the plays that just seemed to be wrong and just should not have happened to begin with. But hey, it is what it is. You can't change it. But we're in a different book now on defense. I do have some new sliders that I'm working with right now. And it is time for us to finally see what this team can do in the postseason. For those of you who are interested in the sliders that I use, I am using strictly Matt 10's All Pro settings. I was on All Madden for a bit, but it, it's something is off with All Madden, guys. And that's part of the reason why things have just gone all crazy this week. You know, in the RFL, we've been working on a new slider set because we started off with All Madden. And things just got weird and they got crazy and it was just too much. So we went back to basics. We're still working on tweaks, but here for this channel, I am working strictly with Matt 10's all pro slider set that he just updated earlier last week, version eight, I believe it is now. And it's just the exact carbon copy of what he's got there. There's only one thing that I think I changed. The one thing that I changed was the field goal accuracy to 55. And I didn't add the extra power to the field goals because we already have enough field goals the way it is. I really just want us to be able to add a little bit more accuracy to some guys so they're not missing like 80% of their kicks from 50 plus yards. So I just upped the accuracy to, to 55. I left field goal power alone at 50. We'll see how it plays out. I have the injury set to 20 and I have the speed threshold set to 48. I also have the penalty slider set the same way. And these are direct... Again, same exact things as what you'll find on Matt 10 on Operation Sports. I know that he does not create them specifically for CPU versus CPU, but a lot of the things that I have noticed over the last couple of years using him as a resource is that it still translates because what he's looking for is those animations. And really the CPU versus CPU gameplay is nothing but animations. So it does sort of still fit together with what we do. Sometimes I'll have to make a little bit of an adjustment because I'm not playing the same exact way. But overall, it usually gives me a really good gameplay. So that's what we're going to roll with right now. The game itself is just really messed up right now. I don't know if you guys have seen this or maybe you've had this on your own, but everything just, just seems to be off. The, the DBs pl are playing weird. The running backs are playing weird. The quarterbacks are playing weird. This is the best set I think I've been able to find for a while where I feel comfortable with it and I, I'm okay with what happens during the game. Will it change? I don't know. But for today, this is the slider set we're using. I'm on all pro. And um, also before we get to the game, I know that some of you have been asking about the stats and that is something that I completely spaced on. We have a whole new stats since the file changed. So let's go review that really quick. Okay, so first we'll go over the team stats. Dylan Gilbert finished the season 36 touchdowns, 14 interceptions, just over 4,600 yards and a rating of 109.5. Pretty good season. A lot of those interceptions came the last couple of weeks. And that's also why the, the slider change came to be because that was happening quite frequently on the all Madden sliders and it just was too much for really for both teams. Damian Pierce, while not hitting a thousand yards, did have 15 touchdowns. I will continue to have him as the starting running back since we saw him last give us a really good push in the running game. And he's averaged over four yards a carry, which is good to see. Sweet just did not get many carries this year. Five touchdowns though from the goal line, which is good to see. Gilbert got in a little bit. Davison even got involved with three touchdowns of his own. Receiving wise, Darius Slayton led us with yards at 12.04, but Alex Poe killing it in the touchdown department with 15 and just shy of 1,200 yards. Leo Walsh almost getting to 1,000 yards as well. That would have been cool to have three different receivers reach 1,000 yards, but he falls just short, adding six touchdowns. So, so overall, I'm really happy with what we're seeing from this team right now. A lot of these young guys that we've 
brought in the last couple of seasons through the draft are starting to show through and show what they can be once they reach that potential that we know they can have. And then over on the defensive side of the ball, Devin White in his first season with us, leading the way with 130 tackles, 13 tackles for loss, one sack, and three interceptions. Greedy Williams leading the team with four interceptions on the season. This was, see, this is exactly what I'm referring to because this is way different than what our last file was, man. I thought Derek Stingley was off to have an incredible season. That never ended up panning out. Greedy Williams was having a rough a rough year, It really, if you think about it. But, hey, we, we got to deal with what we got to deal with. And then over in the sacks department, we didn't have much for sacks at all. Braxton McManus, six and a half. Jonathan Grenard, six. Fletcher Cox, five. And most of these, I feel like, came in the couple of games that we watched. Because, yeah, it's just very weird uh, year right now. The, the the whole game is just so weird, man. I'm hoping that I can get this to be a little bit more realistic in the future. Fletcher Cox leads with 18 tackles for loss. McManus right behind him at 17. Bernard and Robinson at 15. Devin White at 13. And then a few more guys. Look at that. Obo getting in there and getting nine tackles for loss. He's not even a starter. Good to see. And then we had seven forced fumbles, two from White, two from Greenlaw, one apiece from Grenard, Bonner, and Barton. And of those seven, we recovered three of them. One from White, one from Greenlaw, and one for Fletcher Cox. Overall, across the league, Dak Prescott led the way, 5,184 yards passing, 40 touchdowns to only 11 interceptions. Mac Jones comes in second. We have Joe Burrow, Patrick Mahomes, Josh Allen, Jalen Hurts, Trevor Lawrence, Theo Calhoun, who is a rookie for Washington. What a weird build. 5'11", 233. But look at this total. 39 touchdowns, only 7 interceptions. That is pretty impressive, especially for a rookie. Dennis Young, Lamar Jackson, Zach Pearson from the Saints, Hua Tunga Vailoa, Aaron Rodgers still here. Surprised he's still playing. Deshaun Watson, and then down here, finally, Dylan Gilbert. He's got a long way to go, though. So to see him still up here and not, you know, too far down, I think is a good sign. Oh, look at that. Davis Mills getting the start in Atlanta this year. 31 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, 4,400 yards passing. Rushing, Kareem Hunt now with the Panthers. Over 1,600 yards rushing and 20 touchdowns. Najee Harris following that up with 1,517. Saquon Barkley, 1,518. Elliott, 1,417. Look at all, oh my gosh, Nick Chubb, 23. Oh, and Joe Mixon with 23 touchdowns. That is some serious running game that this file seems to have right now. My gosh. This is the, this is the kind of running game I want us to have, right? Like, I want us to be just controlling the game from the ground. I want to have a guy like Barkley and Harris and just guys that can take over games without issue. That's the one thing that we're really missing. And I, I, I don't know if we'll get that out of Pierce or, or Sweet at any point in their career. Receiving, it's Tyler Boyd leading the way. 1,700 yards, 13 touchdowns. But Brandon Ayuk actually hauling in 19 touchdowns to, lead the, to lead the league in touchdowns scored. And he's not that far behind either. 1,562 for yardage. Jacoby Myers looks like he led the league in receptions with 125 for 1,600 yards and 10 touchdowns of his own. He is a really underrated receiver, I feel like, even in real life. Uh, he was giving us problems in the last file, too, if I remember correctly, with our matchups. And here he is with the Patriots still really developing nicely into a solid receiver. Going down the list here, there's still a bunch of really good receivers left. We don't see too many guys that have been drafted yet really taking over. Oh, and there's Brandon Cooks. He is with New England as well. 1,200 yards, six touchdowns. That's good to see. But still having yet to find a single drafted receiver. Oh, there's one. Deshaun Perryman is the first one. 1,200 yards, 10 touchdowns. So very much still a... NFL player league, and it's going to be that way for a, quite a few more seasons, I think. As for the defense, Nick Bosa leads the league with 22 and a half sacks, followed by Aaron Donald with 21 and a half, Miles Garrett at 18, Von Miller still doing it, 17 sacks, Uchene Nuosu at 15 and a half, Jadavian Clowney 14 and a half, along with Greg Russo, Quentin Harris. 
I'm gonna change his number. There, much better. Now he's got at least a sort of a linebacker number, better than 20 something. And I changed his face too, because everybody's got that dang face. Daniel Hunter still doing it after nine seasons. DJ Watt, Evan Stewart, another one. Grady Jarrett. So you're starting to see some of these guys leak in the the guys that have entered the NFL, if you will, in this in this universe since the start. Chidobi Owuzie leading the league with interceptions at seven, followed by the ageless wonders Stephon Gilmore, Andrew Booth, Tyson Campbell, Dante Jackson, Trevon Diggs. AJ Terrell Jr., Derek Forrest, Kevin Biard, Cole Holcomb, Greedy Williams, any more. Wow, like everybody and their mother has four interceptions in this file. Yeah, so I'm just going to sort of go down this list. There seems to be a lot of dudes with interceptions, so we'll just keep on chugging along here. Sorry if I'm not going so. How? Okay, everybody has three. That list went on for like 20 seconds. Wow, you guys get the drift. Everybody has an interception in this in this game. And then a quick rundown of the yearly awards. I know they haven't been technically announced yet, but they're at number one. They're going to be number one. Patrick Mahomes winning MVP. Mike McCarthy winning coach of the year. Brandon Ayuk, offensive player of the year. Von Miller, defensive player of the year. That's impressive given how long he's been in this league. Dylan Gilbert is on course to win Offensive Rookie of the Year. You know what that means, guys. That means we could be in line for another dev upgrade at the end of this. That would be awesome. Marqueston Wise is the leader for the defense for Rookie of the Year. Considering this is really what we're really not sure about, right, is the new guys coming in. I'm going to go through the list with the Rookie of the Year candidates. So Gilbert, Victor Sermon of the Ravens, Gavin Peake of the Bengals, Keon Payne of the Patriots. That's a really cool name. Dylan Byers of the Colts. Marcus Acosta of the Titans. Landon Steele of the Colts. Romain Maynard for the Ravens. Carlos Kitchens for the Raiders. And Chad Franklin for the Patriots. Defensively, Marqueston Wise is leading the way, followed by Marco Curry, Tavares Riddick, Jeff Stoudemire, Demarius Peoples, Glenn Miller, Steve Santiago, James Miller, Sebastian Bradford, and Trey Hayes. So these are some of the names you're going to want to keep an eye on. They could be in line for dev upgrades or even just XP upgrades that are going to make them a little bit more significant going into the future of this franchise file. But these are the things that I really like to keep an eye on. And then over to the NFC side, Kareem Hunt for Offensive Player of the Year. Nick Bosa for Defensive Player of the Year. Offensive rookie led by Theo Calhoun. No surprise there given the stats that he has put up so far this year. Zach Pearson, Travis Davis, Alex Smallwood, Corey Carroll, Austin Greer, Calvin Hodges, Victor Andrews, Emmett Roll, and Damon Clinton for the offense. Defensively, Gilbert Harris leading the way with Chuck Hardwick, Demarius Winter, Lionel Trotter, Premier Winston, Brian Boone, Harry McPhee, Joey Sharpton, Colin Teal, and Jason Haskins coming up behind him. There's a lot of good names here. And you're looking at most of these guys are all at least 77 or above already at this point. So they are going to be significant pieces to these teams moving forward. No real need for us to review the, the Jaguars since we just played them a couple of weeks ago. We know what we're expecting. It is a solid matchup when you look at how our offenses and defenses line up against each other. We both have an advantage offensively, so it should be an interesting game. Let's not waste any more time. Let's go ahead and let's play our first, French, our first playoff game of this franchise. NRG Stadium. We are ready to host our first playoff game here in the wild card round, this time it's also for revenge as these guys just knocked us off a week ago in a 41 to 31 game that had us questioning whether or not we'd still be able to win the division. Luckily enough, we were able to do so. And now we have a chance to get back at them today and send them home. Our first playoff game. I'm excited for this. I can't wait to see what this team of young guys can do when the lights are brightest. And it's all going to be on that guy's shoulders right there, Dylan Gilbert. Can he be the guy that we expect him to be? 
We've had some issues with them the last few weeks. A lot of interceptions, not very good decision making. We're going to have to rely heavily on our defense to keep things in check this time instead of last time. But it's going to come down to this receiving room here alongside also Evan Ingram, the tight end, who is almost a cheat code when it comes to matchups. But Calvin Ridley, Christian Kirk, Zay Jones, and Evan Ingram, of course, they lead a great group of receivers against us. And it's going to be a tough battle. Hopefully, we can get our revenge in this one. We are starting things off on defense today. They're going to start with a handoff to Etienne uh, right up the middle, gain of one. And now they have a stack formation on both sides of the formation right now. Second and nine, Lawrence back to pass, checks it off to the left side. It's Ridley with the catch, brought down just shy of the first. Can we get a big stop here in a quick three and out? Third and inches, they go with the delayed handoff and Etienne powering his way forward for a first and Nick Leverett, one of the linemen is down. We'll see if that affects things for our interior pass rush. First and 10, Lawrence gonna go back to the air. Quick shot to Ingram. Two of two, 20 yards to open things up. Out near midfield now. Lawrence back to the ground, a nice mixture, but my God, Robinson, he he got off his block really quickly and he makes a big play. Still got a yard out of it, but it could have been worse. Second and nine, delayed handoff. Etienne this time tries to get through that opening, but Robinson again, there to bring him down and push them into a third and nine situation. And of course, they're gonna throw it on third and nine. Lawrence hit as he throws, it's still gonna be caught by Zay Jones coming back to the football. Great job by Lawrence standing in that pocket, taking the pressure and still delivering at least a catchable ball to move the chains down inside the 40. Now go back to Etienne and he is met immediately. We let him get that first runoff. Ever since then, not much able to be done. That's the two yard run there, Lawrence. Back to pass, another quick shot, and it's overthrown out of bounds. Another third and long for Jacksonville. Four wide receivers set. Lawrence, quick shot, wide open. Stingley looks like he got lost on the play, and Ridley able to make another catch. My gosh, Jacksonville coming out swinging on this opening drive. Lawrence. Fires again to the left side, and Z Zay Jones with his second grab. He gets it down inside the 10-yard line. Look at that. Just gets inside leverage. Greenlaw not paying attention. He probably could have, you know, went back and batted at the ball, but instead stayed focused on his man. Lawrence delivers a beautiful pass, and now it's first and goal. Lawrence is going to look to finish it himself, and he will not. Getting stopped at the one, and now Greenlaw is hurt. Well, hopefully we'll get to see Greenlaw again. Second and goal from the one. Pitch outside. Wide open. No, he is stopped short. It's Williams. And we do an excellent job. It was Devin White. Awesome pursuit coming from the other side of the formation and tracking him all the way and stopping him just short of the goal line. Third and goal. Can we do it again? They got to spread out here. Watch for that run up the middle. No, they are going to have to go with the pass, and they get it. Stingley right now getting berated by Calvin Ridley, and the Jags are going to go up early, 6-0. All right, Dylan Gilbert entering the field for the first time today, and he's going to be coming out here down 7. I mentioned before this game kicked off, we've had some troubles the last few weeks with turnovers. Can Gilbert come out here and perform a little bit better? You know, control the ball a little bit more. Rely on the run game a tad bit more. First and 10. We're going to start off in shotgun. Pierce lined up to the right. Going to hand it off to Pierce. And Pierce rolling forward to the 29. Short gain of two. Let me offset eye now for second. And we'll go right back to the run game. Pierce trying to squeeze through the gap there. And he's only able to muster up about four yards. Now we find ourselves in third down fairly quickly here. Gilbert back to pass, fires over the middle, and it is dropped. Leo Walsh had it, and it was knocked out. And now we're about to have to punt it on three and out. 
not a good start at all. Lawrence and company coming back out with a 7-0 lead. Drops back under pressure. He's able to get rid of it. Etienne on the outside. Gain of two. Defense definitely has to find a way to step up, though. We cannot allow them to go on another six-minute drive. Handoff. Etienne is dropped. Fletcher Cox in the backfield. A loss of one. This is where we've struggled, though. Third downs. We've not kept composure in the passing game, and we do it again. Etienne left open on the angle route, and we give up yet another first down to Jacksonville. We need a big play here at some point. Lawrence checks it off. Caught Zay Jones for another five yards. Big bunch set split out to the right there. Lawrence looks over the middle. My gosh, we cannot cover. 10 of 11, 102 yards as Lawrence continues to just surgically pick us apart in the secondary. Lawrence, he's got time, it's breaking down, and he finally is able to throw it away. Luckily, McManus was back there, forcing him off target. Really would have loved us to get that sack, though. That could have been a big game changer on this drive. Now it's another redo here on second down, and Lawrence looking over the middle. He floats it right over the head of Patrick Queen to Christian Kirk. That was a tremendous throw. I mean, you can't even be mad at that throw. He floats that right above where Queen is not able to make a play on it. And they get right in between our zone coverage there. But now it's looking bad. They're pretty down seven. They are down now moving on us once again. Lawrence, short throw. Etienne makes the catch inside the 20. Looking for the screen, he gets it set up, but Cox is there, and it brings him down after a short gain of one. Just one time we need this defense to step up on third down. I don't think we have been able to at all yet this game. No, we haven't. And this time we don't either, and it's another touchdown as our defense just getting destroyed right now. Things are not looking good for us right now. Lawrence starting at his own 47. Under pressure, he's able to get rid of it. Wish Gilbert had that kind of uh, pocket awareness. Second and 10 now. After the incompletion. Lawrence, quick strike on the spot route. It's Ridley again. Secondary is just not able to keep up with this with these receivers, to be honest. I, I, it's just, it's apparent. Third and one. Play action to Etienne. Lawrence. Going deep down the right. Where is the defense? Where was the coverage? When I say that the defense is messed up in this game, this is this is sort of what I'm talking about. This is a cover four, right? So when you're going to get that cover four, obviously the four guys in the back, they are going deep. They are treating this as if they're covering the deep routes. The underneath guys have the yellow zones, right? So they sort of sit, you know, sort of like, you know, I don't know. Not right here, but like right in this area. Maybe one will sit right here. Another one sort of sits right here. And they just watch for people to come into their zones. That's that's their goal. Just watch here what Taylor does. Now, I will say that this could be because Taylor is filling in for the injured Greenlaw. That, that very well could be the why that he does this. But this is the kind of thing that is, is plaguing the defense in Madden 23 this year. So this is not man coverage. In fact, White is already pretty much taking the man coverage route here for the tight end. Look at Taylor. Why did you why would you do that? There is if you're playing zone, there's already a defender in that area. If you are playing man, there's already a man on this guy. You don't react to him immediately, so it's not like you were reading him from the get-go. Otherwise, you probably don't drop that far back. And as soon as he runs up to the tight end in the flat that's already covered, he leaves Calvin Ridley absolutely wide open, which he would have been in position. This could have been a stop. But instead, it's a huge play. And I'm going to be doing that every time I see something that is not right with this game. 
Because this stuff has got to be seen by somebody at some point. There we go. A nice stop over the middle by White. You know, like, this game is... It looks pretty. But there is a lot of things wrong inside the mechanics of this game here. Second and ten. Lawrence over the middle. It's caught by Ingram down to the nine. Third and two. And now, on third and two, Lawrence. Play action to Etienne. Throws it short, and again, there's nobody in the area. We give up the first. Oh, man. I don't know why our defense seems to be playing so bad right now. First and goal, handoff. Nothing available again to Williams. Another handoff. That goes nowhere. We're doing... The one thing that we're doing right is we are stopping the run. Right? That, that is for sure. We are doing an excellent job of that. But we haven't done anything to slow down this pass game. And here they go back to the air. They have them... Yep, I saw that immediately. Another touchdown. And this game is pretty much a blowout already. All right. So we're going to open things up here in the second half with the ball. Still down 21 nothing. It's been all Jacksonville so far. Can we make this half about Houston? Gilbert looking deep, and he overshoots it. Four for ten. Third and ten. Going deep again. God. We're going to get bailed out by the, deep, by the referees here. First and ten. Come on, man. Finally, we find something good. Sweet checks in at running back here from the 26. Hand off. Sweet maneuvering through, and he'll get about five on the play. Second and five. Blitz is coming. It's picked up. Gilbert looks short, and it is caught by Slayton. First catch of the day for Slayton comes in the third quarter. That is just crazy. Gilbert, got to throw it. Steps up, fires over the middle. It's Poe, and it's caught. Another gain of six. Third catch of the day for him. We've got to put this in the end zone here. Come on, Gilbert. There it is. Finally a touchdown. Leo Walsh on the spot route, just chilling. Gilbert able to find him. And finally, there is life for this offense. But this is our last stand here. We've got to stop him. We can't give up this first down. Come on, guys. Lawrence. And there it is. There's the turnover we needed. It's Stingley Jr. And he's got plenty of room to run. 40. Finally pushed out at the 30. And that is how you make plays. Derek Stingley has been having issues all day long. And when it matters the most, he stepped up for the turnover. Beautiful job. Stingley reads the route, gets inside leverage on Zay Jones. And we're going to get this ball back with some momentum, finally. Like, I want us to see us throw one up for Poe at this point, or Slayton. These guys are playmakers. Use them. Gilbert drops back, fires deep. There's the play to Poe. Down inside the 10. Five wide on second and goal. Poe lined up very inside slot. Gilbert's got to do something. Let's it go. It's caught. Touchdown, Nico Collins. Gilbert almost takes the sack, but he holds strong. He finds Collins towards the end. And we finally have something going our way. First and 10, we come back out. Defense held strong in the last drive. We're going to start things off on the ground to Pierce, who works his way forward to the 30, a gain of six. Poe still lit up in his X Factor. And Gilbert got a four receiver set. And we're going to go through the air. A quick throw. Poe breaks free from the contain, and he's down the sidelines inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. They tried to press him. And it did not work in the slightest. Gilbert sees it immediately and fires a slingshot into his chest plate. And we'll get a big play there all the way down into field goal range. 
This is the momentum we've been looking for all day. First and 10, Gilbert back to throw. He's going over the middle to Walsh who makes the catch a gain of six. Opening the fourth quarter, still down by seven. Second and four, bunch to the left. Gilbert to throw, blitz picked up nicely. He finds a wide open Slayton who works his way down to the 10. First and goal, it looks like they're trying to press up again. Post still lit up. Does Gilbert go back to him here? Gilbert looking. He's got time. It's going to run out. He takes off with it and he slides down at the five. And now we're going to go to the ground game. It's Pierce and he's down to the two. But that is going to put us at third and goal here from the two yard line. Three receivers split left. Walsh lined up in the slot right all alone. Hand off to Pierce. Up the middle, untouched. And we're going to tie this game up in the fourth quarter with a rushing touchdown for Damian Pierce. Gilbert back. He lets it go, and he throws an interception. No! Oh, man. Tyson Campbell stepping in front of the curl route. And he is going to end our shot of finally taking the lead. He is one-on-one -on -one with Nico Collins. The last time they called this, it ended up being a slants play, but this is into a different formation. Lawrence over the middle, and it's intercepted again! Stingley, second one! We are all the way turned up in the momentum category now. Derek Stingley telegraphing this throw again and jumping in front of Calvin Ridley. Wow. We have the ball almost back where we were before the interception. Can Gilbert capitalize? Handoff, Pierce, and he's only going to get a few down to the 37. 15 for 60 on the day for him. Now coming up on the five minute mark, Gilbert lets it go over the middle. Walsh has it again, and he'll get the first. Another handoff. Nice job there. Pierce had a running lane, but I think it was Olequin gets his arm around Pierce and allows the troops to rally. Second and nine, a quick throw over the middle. It's caught by Poe. And it's going to leave us third and four. Six catches, 90 yards for him today. Four receiver set once again. Blitz picked up nicely inside, and that is Jordan Walker for a pickup of 11 and another first. Split back formation, we hand it off to Pierce. Pierce with plenty of running room, and he's down inside the four. Nice open field job there by the corner. He doesn't bring him down, but he slowed him down enough to stop the touchdown. Gilbert looking, he's gotta do something soon. Gilbert do something, he's gonna run with it, and he gets in, and we've got ourselves the first lead of the day with the two minute warning looming. Gilbert doing it himself with the legs. Got to expect him to keep it through the air. They've had a lot of success today doing that. Lawrence. Oh, my God. Another one. Desmond King taking it back the other way. And that's going to be a touchdown. And I think that might be game. King getting it done. Our third pick of the half. Wow. He tried to get a little too fancy there. Tried to put the ball up. Luckily, he has realized his mistake. And he kept running it. Lawrence breathing down his neck, but my gosh, what a turnaround by this defense. We have scored 35 unanswered points in this second half. I said when we came out of the half, it was all Jacksonville the first half. Can we make this all Houston this half? And we have done exactly that. A minute and a half left. This clock continues to run. Lawrence looking short, he's got Zay Jones. Jones breaks free, and he's got himself down to the 41. A big play there. But regardless of that big play, I don't think it's even possible for them as we get yet another sack, this time from McManus, to come back in this game. I am so proud of the way this team played in this second half. What an absolute, just, just a way to focus and dial it in and realize it's not the end of the world. There's two halves to a game, and Stingley for the hat trick. Pick number three in this game to seal it. And we are going to get a chance to go to the divisional round. 
we have won our first playoff game of the series. And it goes against the team that just embarrassed us a couple weeks ago. You can't write a better story. You just can't. They can call these timeouts. I don't care. This is game. Sweet. Going to go ahead and finish it off. Powerful run to the 36, and that's game right there. What a performance. Hats off to the defense. Hats off to Dylan Gilbert, who in the face of immense pressure, rallied his team and gets the win. 35-21. We're sending the Jags home, and we're advancing ourselves to the divisional round of the playoffs. We had an excellent performance in the second half. The first half was absolutely ugly, as we know. But we do get a second shot at the playoffs now. After eliminating the Jaguars, we're going to go ahead and we're going to be taking on the Cincinnati Bengals, the number two seed in the AFC, for a chance to go to the championship game, the AFC championship. The other matchup going to be the Buffalo Bills and the Cleveland Browns. I would only imagine that that would mean we'll be playing in Buffalo if we find a way to beat Cincinnati. On the NFC side, it was the it was the Buccaneers beating the Seahawks and the 49ers beating the Carolina Panthers, which will make this first divisional round matchup. And then it was the Packers losing to the Cowboys, which leads to this matchup of the NFC East teams, the Washington Commanders and Dallas Cowboys. Crazy game, guys. Like I know we've had a few of those on the channel at, at different points, but to do that in the playoffs was just insane down 21 nothing to come back in the second half like it was almost viking-esque of how my vikings did in the regular season this year i don't want to talk about the rest of it but some of those games are pretty magical to watch but anyway we get the job done we head on to the divisional round to take on cincinnati in cincinnati this is going to be a much harder test for us look at this team 87 overall across the board but of course that is for the next episode as for this one that is all i got for you guys thank you so much for checking out the video if you like what you saw make sure you drop a like you hit that sub button if you like what you're seeing and want to see more turn that bell notification on so you know when i upload some more and i'll see you guys next time